It is I, the 16th student, laying hidden somewhere in these prediction videos. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. Watch out. And yeah, that is all you guys are gonna get because without my glasses, I'm blind as hell. And I really gotta start picking a character with glasses because God, this is hell doing this every year. And yeah, I'm not doing the whole acting bit for the video. I'll give you that. Feeling good. I'm dressed up in a shirt that's definitely too small for me. But that's what you get for shopping on Amazon.com. I've also had this out. If you follow my social media, you know I've had this outfit for forever now. So, oh well. But hello everybody and welcome to week 9 and the Halloween edition of the 2024-2025 NFL Picks and my prediction videos. I am your host, Catherine. Or, as you may know me today, as Mukuro Ikusaba. The ultimate soldier. I'm no soldier by any chance, but you know what? In this attempt at a school uniform, we'll make it work. And, uh, as always, we love to do this, and the lighting is awful, so we're gonna do a little under-lighting just to, you know, make it look not as bad. But, you know, we have fun with it. As we go over our last week's results, we did great. In some aspects, it's not the 13-2 and two or 12-3, and three, but, you know, 10-6, and six, we love a 10-6 and six average. I like it, it works, we can work with it. Try to go a little better, but 10 and 6, we roll. Cincy Philly, could have gone either way. Jets Patriots, like I said, could have gone either way. These games could have gone either way. So you live with some, and you move on. Against the spread, 9 and 7, total 7 and 9, came back to earth on totals. Maybe I'm better at just eyeballing it rather than making random score predictions. Maybe, maybe. But hey. You roll, you get what you get. For someone who took all the betting favorites, 10 and 6, you live with that. Now, that's not a good mantra for every week. But what works is what works. So I like it. That brings our uh, season totals to 76 to 47 straight up, 65 and 58 against the spread, and 68 to 55 on those totals. All positives, and all of them almost 10 plus positives. So we're looking great this season. As far as overall, maybe no record setters, but hey, if we stay above 500 on everything, that's a W in my book, without a doubt. And with that, let's get on to these picks, and I'll let you know right now, I did not take all favorites. I did take some betting underdogs to win, including tonight's game, because this is being recorded on Halloween Day, so today's game, Houston, traveling to New York, taking on the Jets. Houston, who I'm presuming are underdogs in this game for the sake of. They have no Nico Collins, and now Stefan Diggs is done for the season. So it's Tank Dell and whoever the hell else they got. So that's probably why they're the betting underdog on this road game. Because otherwise, I don't know what the Jets have done all year to be a betting favorite. Houston lacking weapons could be a problem. So we'll see where this game goes. But... At the end of the day, it's it's QB and coaches. I trust C.J. Stroud. I trust Amico Ryans. I don't trust Aaron Rodgers. I don't trust uh, Olmbridge, Olmbrick. I don't remember his name, actually. So, I'm rolling with the Texans. I think it's fa fairly simple. I'll take the plus points, and I'll roll with it. And if they lose, you know, it's because he has no weapons. But hey, Tank Dell should be ready to go. So, that should be enough. What do they have? Dalton Schultz as well. I think they can work with it. Another one. Patriots over Titans. You you feel like the Titans should probably be breaking through here eventually, especially if they're going to keep starting Mason Rudolph. They have something. They have it. But, Jacoby or Drake May, either or, I kind of like them more anyway. So, again. I'm rolling with New England. Plus three and a half feels like a number you should take anyway. Because I don't know if I want to lay three and a half to the Titans regardless of their playing. 
So I'll take the plus three and a half. No, I'll take the Patriots to win too. Saints and Ravens to win their games. I think Derek Carr's coming back this week, so it should be beneficial for them. By the way, they're playing the Panthers, and I'm not taking the Panthers. That being said, seven and a half. Fuck the Saints. I don't care if Derek Carr is healthy. I'm not laying seven and a half to you guys. Ravens at this point, I don't want to lay big numbers. Yes, I don't want to think twice about divisional games, but Denver looks good. Their corners are hurt. Or Baltimore's corners are hurt. And even so, the defense is kind of shaky to begin with. Give me the plus 9.5 for Denver. Would it surprise me if the Ravens won by 10 plus? No, not at all. But I'm keeping the door open because I don't want to underestimate Denver as a team. Bengals will the Raiders. Chargers Brown, you can go either way. I'm going Chargers. Falcons over Cowboys, you can go either way. I'm going Falcons. Bills Dolphins, you can go either way. Going Bills. You know, maybe Miami figure something out now. Now that they're healthy and can get into a groove. But, I don't even, I, no. Now, especially with Keanu Coleman stepping up for the Bills. So you got that, you got Cooper, you got Shakir. The weapons are starting to weapon. So, I like Buffalo, but I wouldn't be surprised if Miami kept it interesting. Here the Giants, there's a lot more confidence there. So, they're rolling. Bears, Cardinals, you can go either way. I like the Bears. I do. And they should have won. Uh, Hail Mary is a Hail Mary, but that was just poor defensive coverage. I'm starting to think, and this is coming from the Vikings-Lions game a couple weeks ago, there's no point in just setting three and having everyone play coverage. Nah, fuck that. Go blitz. Go send five. Don't give that quarterback time to sit there and get ready to throw. Nah, I like that. I think that should be a coaching decision people make. From here on out. Send four, send five, send six. I mean, it's what? You're at four receivers out there. You can get five or six guys to cover that just fine. They should be just fine. Send pressure. Don't give the QB time to be comfortable or throw. That's what I'm saying. Not to say the Cardinals are bad, but I do... The Bears defense, I like. Arizona's inconsistent. And probably would have lost that game if Miami didn't fumble it themselves. But I like the Bears' defense. I got to imagine. I don't know what that was offensively last week, but their offense had been improving. So I'm going to give them benefit of the doubt. Eagles will blow up the Jags. Don't care. Rams, Seahawks. I'm going Rams for the fact that Seattle's hurt and the Rams are getting healthy. Or at the very least, they have Cooper Cup and Pukunikua back. So they should be fine. They should be fine. Lions over Packers, I'm taking this pick regardless of the quarterback health, but we don't know how Jordan Love is going to be out exactly. So with that doubt, I'm going with Lions. Vikings over Colts, though so I will say I am happy that Flacco is back in the lineup. What are we going to do with Anthony Richardson? I don't know at this point. It's up in the air. I will say this, though. You make a move to Flacco if you think you're a Super Bowl contender. I don't know why the Colts think they're Super Bowl contenders. I don't. So if you're not contenders, you might as well be letting Richardson get reps. You might as well. You spent the fourth overall pick on him. You gotta figure out what he's what he is. Because riding Flacco now, say you finish with a shitty record, you're not drafting a quarterback. No. Because you still have faith in Richardson to be that guy. Why not play him? And if you are fully convinced in your mind that he's not the guy, then you trade him or you trade up and draft a QB. This seems like you're doing neither. Unless you think Flacco can go on a 2012 run, which I mean, hey, 12, year and a, 12 years later, 2024, maybe he can. Maybe he can. But I don't see the vision, so I think the Colts are just kind of existing. Now, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I don't. So I guess we'll just see where they go. Minnesota two-game losing streak. There is concern because Minnesota usually builds up these great seasons and then flounder it away. But I think they get back on track. I think this is a Colts team they should be able to beat. They lose their left tackle. They trade for one immediately. So Vikings are trying to be serious. And I think they have an opportunity to handle their business in this game. Going to the Vikings. 
And then Chiefs Bucks Monday night. I tell y'all, I tell y'all, if Mike Evans and Chris Godwin were healthy, I would have taken the Bucks. This would have been the perfect game for Kansas City to lose as a first loss. And it wouldn't have been a big deal. On the road, against a good Tampa team, weapons all over. It would have been one of those games. But now they have well, they still have players. Like and you know, like Kate Otten stepped up, you can get White and Bucky Irving to both play some reps, some snaps. So it's like you have something. But against the Chiefs team with a good defense, it's it just feels unfortunate. I think Tampa could have beat them. But without the weapons, I I, I, I don't think I don't trust it. I will say, I will lay eight and a half. If the Raiders can cover can make it a seven point game, get granted garbage time make if the Raiders can make it seven, the Bucks can make it eight and a half. I trust the Bucks. Oh if the Bucks can score twenty, they will cover. Cause I don't see Kansas City scoring thirty. I simply do not. Yep. But yeah, Chiefs to win, Bucks to cover. And of course, with that, we'll go over them all one more time. Texans, Pats, Saints, Ravens, Bengals, Chargers, Bills, Falcons, Commanders, Bears, Eagles, Rams, Lions, Vikings, Chiefs. Those are my picks. Peep over into fantasy. It was a Three and three week across the six leagues. Um, another win in the NFL or in the professional fantasy league, but losses in the other two major named leagues. Um, I made a post on Twitter recapping, um, just showing the standings, playoff placement, blah blah blah. I would post screenshots of the league, but someone in the yellow way decided they wanted to make a political joke for their team name. So nope, no screenshots. I'm not about that life. So, no. Hi, Maya. Nice to see you. So there is that. That is all for me. Happy Halloween and happy week nine to everyone. Quicker video immediately. Oh, hi. Maya really wants to say hi. Hi, Maya. Hi. You want to be on camera? <laughs> Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Canadian Cat CP, Instagram, Blind Canadian Cat. My Blue Sky link's down there as well. Hop into my Discord. Maybe I'll post pictures of Maya right here. Ain't that right, Maya Mama? Ain't that right? Happy Halloween, everyone. Choose peace, accept the love, and have big trust. I'm Ukuro Ikusaba. And I say to you all, a good night.